Mark, we're not that far removed from the Winnipeg Jets, ownership of the Winnipeg Jets proudly being part of a franchise that sold out 332 consecutive home games. A pandemic hits, obviously there's a strong influence there. The economy maybe isn't what it once was, but how do you go from that remarkable achievement of so many consecutive home date sellouts to where you're at today? Well, I think you touched on it. I mean, the the effects of the pandemic were were really significant. Um, I don't think we fully understood them um, until just this past spring. Uh, that that took a big chunk out of our season ticket base. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we learned a lot about the makeup of our uh, of our season ticket base as a consequence. You know, we were able to reflect and go back and look how we put it all together in the first place. And it was pretty unique that we, you know, in a very short period of time, uh, got 13,000 accounts or 13,000 seats sold. What we learned, and we knew, but we really learned um, was that a large part of that uh, of that account base were were groups of people that had had. Uh, partnered together when the pandemic hit and those groups saw some attrition, one or two accounts pulling out, the whole thing collapsed. And uh, the other thing that happened was the way we went on sale was a Saturday afternoon. We didn't have a real uh, approach to our business community. And so, you know, we've come to understand that we have a, a very low percentage of our season ticket base are held by companies, lowest in the country by far. Mm -hmm. Um, and that again, n not the fault of anyone, just more a consequence of the way we went on sale. And, and so, um, you know, in there lies an opportunity for us. And, and that's been one of the steps that we've taken since last spring. We, you know, we, we spoke to the Chamber of Commerce and, and we kind of let this situation be known. And, and uh, since that time, we've been out doing a lot of presentations to business groups and mm -hmm. in an effort to try and, and, and gain some more uh, some more customer base there. Yeah, and I mean, that's a pivot for your group, admittedly. Um, so your experience in this city, which is basically lifelong, you know, do you believe that the corporate sector is there? Yeah, I really do. I mean, and I should say, like, I'm extraordinary, extraordinarily grateful for the amount of support that we have, um, you know, from the name on this building, from, from Canada Life's decision to take over the naming of this building, um, you know, through our our partnership and our regional broadcast deal through our, 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 our corporate sponsorship base has always been very strong. Our, our suites are sold. Um, there aren't really any levers for us to pull on mm -hmm. um, other than people coming to games. So I believe the base is here. Um, I, I know the base is here. I mean, it's been here uh, and, and we've, we've not had any challenge in renewing our corporate interest in what we do. It's, uh, we, we, we need to get more businesses, frankly, invested by way of, of ticket purchases as opposed to rink board sales, et cetera. Aside from the play on the ice, you don't have any interest in being in the public eye. You really haven't ever wanted that, but yet here you are, you know, because the attendance of the Winnipeg Jets, the saggy attendance of this club, isn't just local news it's it's national and to a degree it's international and you know there's been some pushback customer service has taken it on the chin with the winnipeg jets are you aware of some of those concerns and how do you intend on addressing that well i'm aware it's what i do for a living uh darren like this is my job and it has been now for i think this is my 28th year and so um you know i i think i understand why it's news i, I to me, I think it's partly because I think a lot of people were surprised that we were able to find our way back in the league and it was maybe a little improbable. And we're the smallest market in the, in the league um, by you know, a fair measure. And so I think there's always been a curiosity as to whether we could sustain it here. I don't think people expected us to sell out 10 years in a row, but we did. And so, I mean, the fact that we did is what gives me the hope and confidence and uh, expectation that we'll be able to draw people back to watch the, the product that we've put together. So I, I'm, you know, look, I mean, businesses go through cycles. Um, what we're facing right now, I would tell you, is far less daunting, mm -hmm. far, far less challenging than it was to build this building in the first place and then to be patient and wait and, and put a plan together to get 
uh, a team again. Those were those took years, um, and and a lot of hard work from a, a lot of very talented people. So, um, I'm I'm very attuned to where we are, uh, you know, and and in the sentiment in our marketplace. It's it's a small town. You you can't put gas in your car without hearing about you know people's feelings towards the team. I mean that literally. Um, you know, it's, and I love that about, like, that's what we signed up for. That, that's what I love about um, this particular circumstance. I love the challenge of being the smallest market and, and being able to compete against 31 other uh, larger markets. And, um, and so, you know, we're, we, 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 we've taken a lot of uh, steps uh, to try and, um, to try and, and get greater interest. Uh, you know, we've, we've reduced uh, the number of games that are required to be purchased. We've become a lot more flexible in our in our pricing. We we return deposits. We did away with the multi-year commitments. We've kept our ticket price, uh, and you know it's I'm, it's the second lowest of all the teams in Canada. We, we work hard at that, at keeping it as affordable as we can, and we've invested. Um, I think the one thing I can say um, unequivocally is, you know I. I and I learned this, Darren, from, from that time frame that you're familiar with, you know, when, when the team left. And because it was about, it was that time that we got involved. The team, the team really belongs to the community. And we, we get referred to as owners, but we're really more stewards. And, and that's how we, that's how we approach this. So, uh, you know, we know that for, in order it to be here over the, you know, 50 years from now, you got to invest. And I think we can hold our head up in that regard. Like we've, we've invested in much in renovating this building as we did building it. We've, we invest in our payroll. We've been a cap team um, for, for years now. We've, um, we, we've invested in, in the surrounding area and, and not just in buildings, but in the well-being of people in our downtown. And, and, and we feel that's, that's the commitment we have to maintain. And, and we feel like as long as we continue to do that, People will recognize that we're, you know, we're we're putting our best foot forward. That, uh, you know, we'll get through this little uh, this cycle we're in right now, and and uh, we'll get back to those sellouts. Yeah, you're confident of that, right? To get back to full capacity sooner than yeah, later. Yeah, I really am. I mean, uh, I, like I, I don't know how to say it other than that. Like we've been through more challenging parts of this, mm -hmm. and. I, I'm born and raised here. I know this community. I know how passionate people are. Frankly, it's the biggest challenge of all this is 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 the responsibility you feel that you you know for the product on the ice and you don't you know how how much people care and you don't want to let them down. And so, you know, we're we're deeply invested in this. And and when I say we, I mean I mean Chevy. I don't know you know of anybody who cares more about about trying to put a product on the ice that people are proud of. And I, I honestly think he's done a f really fine job of that. I think we've got a, a good team again this year. I think, you know, we've invested in, in, our, in, our, uh, in the core of our team and very, very excited about that. We turned six kids pro this summer. We have never done that before. Um, we've got, you know, what we think is a, a really good pipeline of young players coming along and so those are the things we focus on, and, and as long as we f we remain focused on the quality of our product, uh, and it you know I, I believe it'll bring people back and and will be sold out again. So you mentioned ten years season ticket base was around thirteen thousand. Yeah. Right. Now it's under ten thousand. Yeah. You're a savvy businessman. Um, how how long can the business side of the Winnipeg Jets continue to operate if? those numbers don't climb back to what they were? Well, I, you know, I, um, first of all, I, I really believe they will. So I'm not, I don't have a, a scenario in my mind of, you know, what does this look like at 10,000? Uh, um, we're just really focused on how do we get it back to 13 uh, because we've been at 13, uh, we were there for 10 years. So how do we get ourselves back there? Mm -hmm. um, that's where we need to be, honestly, to be competitive and, and uh, and so uh, I don't know that I'm that savvy uh, because I don't have that scenario. Uh, I don't, we don't have that playbook. You know, how do we run this at 10,000? Because um, 
we, we honestly believe we can get it back to where it was. I was here and covered it daily when the Winnipeg Jets became the Phoenix <laughs> Coyotes way back in the day. Um, worked it, lived it. You lived it. Uh, there were good days and there were way too many bad days for the community of, of Winnipeg. Um, you know, it felt at the time like the heart of Winnipeg got ripped out when the National Hockey League left this city, which leads me to the next question. Is there any real threat of a sale, a relocation, if this can't get turned around? No. Uh, look, I mean, you hit it on, on the head. Like, the, it, it ripped the heart out. Um, you know, I, I remember vividly the, the broadcast that where it was definitively leaving and after having worked on it with a number of other people it was it was beyond heartbreaking I, I you know I um, I wept like a, like a child it, hard. It, it was really hard and so um, but but I would say to you that it's it's not just my emotion or my feeling that 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 I rely upon to say that you know that will never happen again. You have to look carefully at the circumstances that existed then versus today, right? There was no building, right? And and the prospect of one was tenuous. More importantly, there was no partnership with the players. There there was not a collective agreement between the league and the players that allowed for the economics of hockey to work in Winnipeg back then. It wasn't until 2004 that that became a reality. And it's a very, very different world today than it was back then. We have this building and it's, it, it, it's, a, it's an NHL quality building. We have a great partnership with our players. We have that, you know, that allows for cost redistribution and, um, and a salary cap, which allows a lot of teams to, to exist in this league. So uh, I, I can see how somebody might, how you could ask that question, you know, because it, because it happened once, is it a concern that could happen again because you're the smallest market? I say, um, you know, like not on our watch. Um, we've been doing this far too long. We got in, into this for the very reason of that heartbreak that you described. Mm -hmm. It was that very emotion that brought us into this and then that kept us um, in the fight to, to get a building built and then to, to, to acquire a team again. So, you know, and then to have 10 years of sellouts and have two years of, of challenge brought on by a global pandemic, um, it'd be a little extreme, you know, for us to say, oh gee, I, we're not sure this works anymore. Um, I think that would be, far less than savvy that would be um, that would be really unsound and unhealthy if not counterproductive to say okay well if we're having this conversation a year from now I mean it does no good to think that way. no I, I just we don't think that way I don't allow our, our yeah. folks our team to think that way we're focused on the now we're focused on you know Chevy's focused on his job of uh, and, and, and you know delivering the product and We've got a plan in place to engage our community again in, in a respectful way. And, and I have to say, I mean, we've got to be very respectful of, of people's choices. Like, um, you know, people are dealing with a whole range of issues right now that they, they didn't in our first 10 years. Right. You know, we're dealing with inflationary pressures on people that have, that hit people's discretionary uh, spending ability. We've got to be incredibly respectful of that right we're dealing with issues in our city that we didn't have 12 years ago and they're not unique to Winnipeg but we've got our challenges in our downtown with you know with um, with a set of circumstances around mental health and, and addiction and, and resulting homelessness that are that are really difficult you know and 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 we're glad to be a part of you know trying to find some solutions there so you have to be mindful of all of those things. What, what are people thinking about? You can't drive home at night thinking that everybody's worried about you and your business. And people have their own concerns. They're driving home, they're worried about their kid's soccer game. They're worried about what happened in their life that day, right? This business can be very consuming because it's so covered, mm -hmm. right? 
and it takes up so much of the oxygen in our city, you tend, you, you know, it'd be easy to think, well, everybody should be worried about us. Well, that, that'd be, that would be very unwise, right? Everybody's got their own, their own real world that they're living in. So it's not for us to say, hey, uh, come and worry about the Winnipeg Jets, right? And, 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 and to, to, to take offense at the fact that we're not sold out right now. I mean, that, 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 that would be really foolish and unthoughtful. So um, we know the support's here. We just got to get back to it. It's going to be, it's, it's on us to do that. It's going to take some hard work, but we, we're accustomed to that, you know? So we had a good ride for 10 years. Darren, we really did, yeah. and and we got you know we got took a heavy shot with the pandemic. We got to recover from it. That's on us. But you're in win now mode, and that's the message to the fans. And I mean that was made abundantly clear with the deep investment to Connor Hellebuck and and Mark Shively, two very good NHL players in any market. But you could have gone the other way in the off season and, and considered a renovation to the team or a rebuild. Yeah, you, for sure you could. You could you could reduce the costs. That's yeah. the quickest way to do this is to cut player costs. Again, you know, like I do this for a living, so I, I examine those those kinds of options really thoughtfully. I or try to. The word rebuild is really easy to throw around because it sounds good. Yeah. And I, you know, I've gone, I've gone through every every team that's said rebuild. It's expensive. It's expensive, and it's. It takes a long time. And people think, well, rebuild is a year or two. No. Rebuilds at a minimum, they're five. They can be seven. Yeah. I can show you some that are 10, 12 years in the making. Uh, our market doesn't deserve that right now. You, you can't take a team that's made the playoffs five of the last six years and take it apart and expect your fan base to support that. If you have the means of, of, of keeping it together, you gotta keep it together. And as I said, we got some really exciting young talent coming that we, you know, will be can be added to our core over the next few years. So this is, you know, I mean, Darren, I, any anybody worth their salt in this game is trying to win. Like that's what yeah. this, you know, we're trying to we're trying to win. And and I and I, if our fans ever get the sense that we're not trying to win, then we're in real trouble. All right, we'll wrap up with this. Aside from what we've already discussed here, I mean. What is the message to Winnipeg Jets fans from Mark Chip? We're all in. Like this is, uh, we have been for, for almost three decades now, and um, this is what we do, and and we're working really hard at it. Like I, I can tell you that our group, we got 300 people full time with us that are taking this very seriously, and are working very very hard. At, at earning uh, that customer base back and we have every confidence that we will.